Welcome to Charles TVE, the channel that deals with real life situations that can help improve your living standards. If you're new to our channel, remember to subscribe to this content, like and share our videos, add your comments and contributions. Uh, today we are dealing with the Ejapadie document. This is a restricted document, but we put it out there. This document has been in circulation since uh, December 20, uh, 2020, but we put it out there for you, the viewer to uh, see the contents and make up your mind uh, in any way that you think now this document comes out in the light of the issues currently going on in ghana ghana is due to go uh, for elections um, by the end of 2024 december and there has been issues on the 3rd of October 2023. There was a big demonstration uh, by the opposition party, National Democratic Congress, um, being the NDC led by uh, General Mosquito, which is Esiedu uh, Katia, who is the party chairman. Um, the reason for the demonstration was the fact that the governor of Bank of Ghana, Mr. Addison, had uh, produced an annual report which indicated that he had made, made a loss of 60 billion new Ghana cities. This amount is equivalent to about six, nearly 6 billion US dollars or about 4.3 billion pounds. Now, this is a huge amount of money for a small country and this is why it is necessary. Uh, to release this document for the ordinary person to read through it and to ascertain if this is a document of real facts or if it is fiction. Now, to start off with, Ghana had its independence in 1957 from British colonial rule under the leadership of Dr. Osajifu Kwame Nkrumah, who helped Ghana to gain independence. Now, Ghana's constitution is based on the American constitution. The constitution was drafted in 1992 and revised in 1996 by uh, Flight Lieutenant John Jerry Rollins, who ruled Ghana from 1979 to the year 2000, uh, establishing the National Democratic Congress Party. Now, because Ghana's constitution is based on the American constitution, I will read an extract from the draft of the American constitution on the Declaration of American Independence on the 4th of July, 1776. Now, this constitution, which was um, drafted and came into force in 1787, was influenced by John Locke. Um, and so I will go on to read it. So this document is influenced by John Locke and also Thomas Jeff Jefferson. Human rights and the duty of government. We hold on these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equally, that they are endowed by their creator life certain unalienable rights that amongst these life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted amongst men, deriving their power from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive, of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organize its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to effect their safety and happiness. And so, um, this document, uh, basically, based on this uh, declaration, is saying that governments actually derive their power from the people and therefore must act in the best interest 
of the nation and the people and that if they don't adhere to this then it, the people have the right to actually remove them from power so this document uh, is called a Japadie, um coming to force under the leadership of Nana Adodankwa Akufuado and masterminded by Nana Amwetia Ufuripuni being the Achimene. Now, whether this document is fact or fiction, it's going to be read out and the audience can make up their mind. Bear in mind that at some stage, there was that idea of a Japadie, uh, a Japa deal, actually, to be more precise. It was a Japa deal, which um, was basically trying to consolidate, um, um, I think, government funds into a particular fund, which would have then been run as a private um, fund. And therefore, the directors were also uh, given immunity to prosecution. But this document may not have passed parliament. But a spin-off of this of it is the Ejapadie document. So as we can see here, I read here Osajefo Amwetia of Uripeni. And as you can see on the bottom left corner, it indicates that the document is written AD 2020 and it seems to be a restricted document. And it's down to the audience to listen to the contents of it and to make up their mind what they think. And so uh, Nana Dodankwa Akufuado, who came into power in 2016, uh, promising many good things for Ghanaians. He was a very, well, then a very knowledgeable uh, man and inspired a lot of Ghanaians. Uh, but it appears that in his leadership, uh, there has been a lot of problems and Ghana is currently sunk into a huge amount of debt and uh, have basically lost a lot of its natural resources as a result of this excessive borrowing under the leadership of Nana Adodankwa Akufuado. Uh, it appears that complaints that have been made have not been listened to in any way. So I will just run through this document and then obviously to leave for the audience to make up their mind. So you can see on the right side is the uh, J.B. Dankwa, who was a lawyer at the time of independence and I think was placed in house arrest or um, detention without trial by uh, the then Osajufu, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, who actually felt that uh, certain uh, parties in Ghana were not acting in the good interest of the nation. Now, on the left side, you can see Nana Amwatia of Oripini as a younger per well, seems to be a lot youthful at the time. So, this is the content of the document. Uh, it's a little bit blurry, so I'm going to do my best to read it onto you. Uh, so, on the contents, you can see economic and financial sector control. So, this document, um, obviously, the Akufuado government has been deemed to be the government that has been associated with cronism um, a government of friends and family um, yes and so this document apparently is a plan uh, to control the entire economy of ghana that is with nanadu dankwa in power and when his time comes to an end this is a plan document uh, to consolidate uh, power uh, by Nana Adodankwa Akufuado and his family. So, on the start, obviously, um, the first part of the document talks about economic and financial sector control, introduction, uh, phase one, overview, phase two, banking, insurance, and capital markets. Uh, uh, 2.1 a uh, 1.4 banking 1.4 again is insurance uh, and then capital markets mining oil and gas industries and tele telecommunications so this is the area that obviously it appears that there is a plan 
to take absolute control. So, um, you know, with this excessive losses within the Bank of Ghana, an amount um, of four, about 4.3 billion pounds is such a huge amount of money for a small country like Ghana. Uh, which refuses to make account for this amount of money. And so this is why I read the um, declaration, obviously, um, as part of the U.S. Constitution, the declaration that has been made in there of what governance is and their duties to the people and to the state. It may appear that this document may come in two parts. So the second part is the population uh, uh, political terrain, which talks about the party, and it mentions the name Kennedy of Japan. Samuel Ewuku is mentioned here. John Buedi, Buedu is mentioned here. The Rollins factor. Other minor parties. Then it talks about religion and chieftaincy. And I can see here there's a mention of a name, Bishop Charles um, Ajin Asari, Sam Crunchy Ankara, Pastor Mensa Otabel, National Chief Imam. Then the next part uh, talks about the national situation as regards, and then it says the media landscape. Okay, so basically going through this document, it will be down to the audience to make up their mind if this document is indeed an authenticated document or it's an authentic document or if it's a fake, the contents will reveal itself. So it starts and it says, to our future, made of the present and the unborn of whom this will nation is being prepared to our four foremost kin of repenting the progenies spread across this world for whom and to whom alone this sacred document is prepared so there are a few errors in the way that is been written but i will do my best to read it to make it make sense as the hair of nana epi Apienim Kwafra Kwaframa Nana Kuntun Kununku and Oforipeni. Our people were never defeated in the wars of old. We were nobody's subject. Yet, after 1957, we were made to live in the shadow of the descendants of the people who never defeated us in war while the Ashanti kingdom was uplifted. To put us in the shade. In relatively recent times, the struggle and work of 1.8 Dankwa to restore Achemman to its original glory were thwarted by, but he fought bravely to the end. With the arrival of Nana, being Nana Adodankwa Akufuado, we see the rebirth of a second J.B. Dangwa, who has come to the rescue. Fully cognizant that we are currently part of the modern nation of Ghana, the name of which was originally proposed by the illustrious son of Oforipeni and Fi of Ocheman, L.B. J.B. Dangwa, and aware that it is currently made up of other Diverse people, we have to assert our old selves and ensure that we no longer continue to live in the shadow of other kings and people whose forebears we defeated in war. So this is uh, basically the Achim um, idea or ideology to uh, basically assert themselves as the more superior a group of people in Ghana. And obviously, the name Ghana was given to Ghana by Osajefo Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, 
not D, not JB Dangwa. So that needs to be corrected. In spite, it seems that this will be in spite of our tremendous contribution to this Ghana entity. Ochiman has not been credited with the appropriate awe and grandeur that we rightly deserve in recent times. Currently, with Nana in total control being Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado of the whole entity of Ghana, we have a duty to ensure that we take over the commanding heights of the essential fabric of the country in order that even in the event that Nana be Nana Adodankwa leaves the after mandatory eight years, the sons and daughters of Ochiman will be firmly secured and such control, both financially and economically, that we can no longer be ignored in the battle to control the destiny of Ghana. So once again, here you are where the Bank of Ghana is unable to account for four point three billion pounds. It's not CDs, this is pounds. And we see this kind of uh, writing where a group of people come into Ghana and it appears, it appears from this document that there is that intention or that um what do we well the intent to basically um take um, economic and political control of Ghana. To achieve, we need appropriate, we need to appropriate the fundamental economic and financial levers which will guarantee such control in years to come. In doing this, we need to be strategic. We will have to work with other people from some of the diverse ethnic groups, including some carefully selected people in Asante and other diverse entities or lands. This will make them... Uh, it's, this is difficult to read. This will make them... I'm not quite sure what is written here. That they also... Well, this will make them feel that they also have had hand in the pie. It will obscure any suspicion that the project is essentially an overrepenning project. This point is crucial because with electoral politics, we have to have our eye on the numbers in the electoral process. We cannot be blatant until we are completely secure in the endeavor. It is, a, it is especially so because so far, the Asantis constitute the single most populous ethnic group in the country. Although the Asante group within the current NPP is gearing itself up to take over the party after Nana's tenure in 2024, it will be ideal if we could work to bypass them in 2024. With hard work, we could work to pass the mantle over to a non akan person, preferably from the north, under whose presidency we could secure the majority of our takeover project. And so we also see the coming out of um, uh, basically uh, uh, Alan Shamatin, who was uh, obviously a political heavyweight within the NPP, withdrawing from the party and then you see the uh, basically the total support behind uh, Baumia, Dr. Baumia and so this document is written in 2020 is it a plan or is it just a coincidence that uh, the NPP currently have their full support behind Baumia so as I said, you are going to determine how you want to take this document. When we have finally captured the command and control sectors of the country for our private use, 
we will then be in a better position to wield the necessary political and economic muscle to manage the destiny of this country and uh, wherein of the houses of Ofori Penny. To be specific, we need to strengthen our effort to control the mineral resources as well as the electricity and water institution. The success of this project depends on the way in which we, for the first time, being in control, being control the well, being in, maybe it means being in control of the judiciary and the press. We conclude with a word of caution until we have secured the critical sector under our control we will minimize the danger of obvious acts of individual corruption in order not to alienate the rest of the population we must focus on the ultimate goal we must seek first the economic and financial levers and all other male or all other may follow eventually so this it appears to be the plan but to go forward i will once again read uh, the extract from the um, from the u.s constitution upon which the ghana constitution is based uh, just to back this up so bear with me a minute as i go through this So once again, the extract in the U.S. Constitution, which was written in 18, 1787, uh, after the Declaration of Independence in 4th July 1776, says, We hold to these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equally, that they are endowed by their creator life, setting on alienable rights that amongst these life liberty and the pursuit of happiness that to secure these rights governments are instituted amongst men deriving their power deriving their power from the consent of the govern that is being the people that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends. It is the right of the people to alter or abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such forms as to them shall see most likely to effect their safety and happiness. And so once again, if this document is factual, then it seems that uh, that intent of securing national resources for the interests of a family um, is definitely in contravention with this declaration upon which the Ghana constitution is based on. So there is the signature. And so it appears that um, this signature appears to be something that says Ofori Atta. So once again, it's down to the individual to make up their mind what they think this document is. So sector, sector control. This is the second part. And it says Ofori Penny. So it could also be that that signature may also be a signature of Ufuri Penny. So I'm going to go back again to have a second look. Uh, this. Okay, this definitely uh, Ufuri Atta. That actually de definitely does say Ufuri Atta. Okay, so this is the uh, sector control. The economy and power and financial um, economic control are 
Okay, so I'll try again. The economy and power and financial, economic control are inextricably systems constitute the nerve of linked every in-country search. Okay, so this, as you can see, has not been written out properly, uh, but we'll try to make some sense of it. That any group that controls economic might of, uh, that any group that controls the economic might of a nation essentially controls its political power. At the same time, political power is virtually a condition president to economic and financial power in our country and Africa as a whole. Our agenda or political dominance will hinge on our financial might. So is it a coincidence that 60 billion or the governor of Bank of Ghana, Dr. Addison, is unable to account for 60 billion new Ghana city, which is equivalent to about 5 billion US dollars or 4.3 billion British pounds. So it goes on to say our agenda or political dominance will hinge on our financial might. We therefore need to overwhelm, we need overwhelming control of the key economic growth pillars of Ghana. Such dominance will assure significant inflow of resources to finance our political blueprint. Again, control of key economic and financial sectors will give on parallel leverage in the periods we may have not in the period we may not have direct political authority with economic power. We could manipulate the system to generate an unfavorable economic situation enough to make any government of the day not directly under our control become unpopular. The importance of a significant, large and stable financial firepower on finance tie execution of our political and economic control project cannot be overemphasized. And so there are a few errors in this document, but from what we can make of it, is basically trying to say that when you have the financial power, then you will have the control over the economy and you can actually manipulate a situation. And so it appears that uh, the Ecuador administration is not actually acting in the best interest of the nation that actually put him in that position. And so then accountability is actually required of his leadership. Right, so we go on to phase two. That's the overview. The first phase of the economic and financial sector control was to be implemented in Nana's first term of office. As we get closer to the end of the first term, we have set the ball rolling regarding the objectives set out in our first document. There have been, oh, objectives set out in our first document. So it appears that there may have been a first document. There have been difficulties largely due to some pitfalls on our part, for example, the control of electricity electricity sector could have been handled better. Had it, had it not been for the greed of some of the non-Akim elites, we had included our cover. We had included in our cover, maybe that is what it's supposed to mean. Again, 
the way some CSOS obtain vital information as easily about the AWAPA project has resulted in them wrong-footing us and and bolded the opposition to jump into the fray. We should, however, find some ingenious way to overcome the opposition. Changes in the leadership of most supervisory institutions, particularly the Central Bank and Security and Exchange Commission, has allowed for other blueprints to be implemented. For example, the financial sector clean up successfully eliminated most banks with hostile ownership. And so under the Akufuado government, yes, there were about nine banks, including um, Unibank and so many other banks that were basically consolidated and taken over by the governor of Bank of Ghana, Dr. Addison. And so it appears that this document uh, seems to be playing along the lines of the events that has been ongoing in Ghana for the past, uh, one should say, since uh, Akufuadu took power in 2016. The document, uh, you, you, you can actually see that these things are probably not happening by chance, but by plan. And so such Inten intentional acts must uh, be brought to account. That is, if the document is found uh, to be uh, a matter of truth rather than fiction. So, then we start to mention the bank. So, we have Data Bank Financial Services has been playing the role of transaction advisor in major government deals with the enterprise group is the main insurer of government assets. Our international proxies are also playing their part in accordance with our broad objectives. The insertion of Kelney GVG into the telecommunication space and the implementation of Unipass at Ghana's key entry ports are other notable successes of phase one. The digitalization of payment processing through the implementation of Ghana Quick Response Code is progressing steadily and is getting impetus from the desire of banks to entrench digital banking in response to COVID-19. And so you can see that COVID-19 is actually mentioned in this document, but the document is written in, well, the document is written in 2020, so COVID-19, that makes sense. Anyway, this is the end of part one of this document. It will carry on from our next video. Thank you for watching. Uh, Charles TVE and make up your own mind whether this is fact or fiction.